Hello my friends, uh, Victoria here. I hope everyone is well um, on this dreary Tuesday. I don't know if it's raining where everyone else is. Um, but I suppose the gardens need the rain, don't they? As well as the sunshine. So hopefully this will mean that things will grow all lovely again. Um, welcome to my Tuesday morning wellbeing chat. Um, it's been really lovely connecting with you guys every week and seeing your names pop up. Um, we miss you guys and um, you're helping us to get through this as much as we're helping you or at least trying to help you through it. Um, it's not always possible to tell who's watching so um, if you are watching uh, with me right now please say hi so I can say hi back. I know we've got Jackie and Tracy right now. Hi ladies, I hope you're well. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about motivation. Um, it's something that a lot of people understandably are struggling with at the moment. So I wanted to just talk you through um, a few little tips that might help. Um, first of all, I want to say that feeling a lack of motivation, um, along with anything else you might be feeling at this time is perfectly normal. Um, there is no right or wrong way to feel at the moment um, and it's also per perfectly normal to feel more motivation at certain times than others depending on a number of different factors. So if you are finding that you know you just can't quite get going you know I think you'll probably find that a lot of people are feeling that way as well. Hi Tony I can see that you're watching I hope you're well my friend. Um, so you know, expecting to feel motivated 100% of the time is unrealistic, um, but I'm hoping to, that today I'll be able to talk you through uh, and help you a little bit in terms of understanding motivation, um, where it comes from and how to increase your own levels of motivation um, in order to increase your levels of positive well-being. Um, now, in its most basic sense, motivation is the need or desire to do something. So when you shorten motivation down, you get motive. Um, so the reason you do something. Um, when we're feeling unmotivated, we might feel a bit lacklustre, lethargic, down, um, feeling, oh, what's the point? Um, or we might have lost sight of why we want to do the things that we want to do in the first place. Um, quite often, we forget how good we feel once we've done the things that we're avoiding. Um, or don't feel motivated to do. Um, and avoidance is a funny old thing. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what I can achieve when I'm actively trying to avoid something that I need to do. Um, <laughs> and when we're feeling a lack of motivation towards one thing, we may experience an increase in motivation towards something else. So, um, you know, I remember when I was at college, if I had an essay that was due, you know, the, the amount of motivation I felt then to like suddenly do my housework was incredible. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else, you know, anything that you guys avoid or don't feel much motivation to do that actually causes you to be more motivated to do something else. Let me know. Um, so, you know, if you are feeling, if you are noticing, you know, a lack of motivation towards one thing, that's causing you to increase your motivation towards something else. It's worth checking in with yourself to see what you're avoiding and why. Um, so, um, hi Jeanette, lovely to see you. Um, so motivation is the process that initiates, guides and maintains goal orientated behaviour. Um, and it involves emotional, biological, social and cognitive forces within your brain that activate behaviour. So there are two types of motivation. The first is, and I always struggle to say that, this, um, extrinsic. Um, and these are the motivators that happen outside of ourselves, so outside of our own minds and bodies. And often include rewards like social recognition, um, money or praise from others. So the things that we do um, and, and those things motivate us because of external factors to us. Um, and intrinsic motivation is like the drive that happens within us. 
So, you know, that will be different depending on what you enjoy, what your goals and values are. But it might be like spending time doing like a really complicated, you know, thousand piece jigsaw or, you know, focusing on, you know, fully colouring in like a mindfulness colouring sheet or, you know, tidying your bedroom. Although, you know, tidying your bedroom could be extrinsic if, you know, your mum's asked you to tidy your bedroom. So you might do it, you know, to make your mum happy or, you know, to surprise your partner. But if you're doing it for you to make yourself feel good and give you a nice space to relax and unwind, then that could be an intrinsic uh, motivator as well. Um, there are three main components of motivation. So number one is the activation. So that is the decision to act or um, start a behavior. Number two is persistence. So that is our continued effort towards a goal, despite any obstacles that may exist. Um, number three is intensity. So that is the amount of effort and concentration that goes into pursuing a goal. So these three parts are present whether the goal is big or small. So whether, you know, when I talk about a goal, it can be something like making sure you drink two litres of water every day. Um, or it could be something relatively big like, you know, clearing and organising the cupboard in my hallway that I've been shoving things into for months and now takes two people to get anything in or out of it. So, you know, it can it can be anything. Um, just seeing who we've got. We've got Ben. Hi, Ben. Lovely to see you. And we've got Ali as well. Thank you for joining me this morning, guys, to talk about motivation. Um, if you've missed any of this, then um, the videos are always saved so you can go back and watch them at a later date. Um, so I'm not saying that I'm the most motivated person out there. It definitely comes in peaks and troughs for me, the same as lots of you guys. But I know that if I implement those three components, I'm much more likely to see, succeed or whatever goal I've set myself. So the activation is the decision or commitment to do something. And this might look different to different people. Um, for me, that looks like writing something down. Um, getting it out of my head onto paper so I can see it. Um, once it's on paper, I can then be reminded of it whenever I look at my, my notepad or my to-do list or, you know, the post-it note, wherever I've chosen to write it. Once it's written down, there's much less chance of me forgetting it. Um, the, persistent, the persistence part is, you know, just say the goal is to drink more water, I'm buying a water bottle and I'm carrying that bad boy around with me like my life depended on it. Um, you know, it'd be easy to say that I forgot because I was busy, um, you know, things got in the way. So I try and make it impossible to forget despite what, you know, what my day might have in store for me. Um, so um, the persistence part for me is making every reasonable adjustment possible to make achieving my goal as easy as possible. Um, so the intensity for me, this is constantly reminding myself of what my goal is and why I want to achieve it, keeping it fresh in my mind. You know, if I drink more water, my skin will be clearer, or I'll be less inclined to pick at food when I'm not hungry, because thirst can often disguise itself as hunger. There are so many benefits to staying more hydrated, I'll be less grumpy. Like, does anyone else get grumpy when they're thirsty? Is that just me? No? Um, we've got Sarah here with us. Hello, Sarah. I hope you're well, my friend. Um, now, some days we might wake up feeling motivated and it's a subconscious thing that just happens and we don't even think about it. We don't even know why, but we just wake up and it's a good day and we get stuff done. Um, but other days it might be a little bit harder. Um, what I will say, and those of you that know me will probably have heard me say this before, um, we can't always wait for motivation to arrive. Motivation is not just going to come knocking on the door and go, knock, 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 oh, hello, uh, Victoria, is, I'm here, I'm your motivation, come on, let's get moving, let's get stuff done. Um, more often than not, we have to start before we feel the motivation. Um, but when we start and we make progress, however small, that makes us feel good and that's where the motivation kicks in um, because we feel good and we want more of that good feeling. 
So, you know, I know that can be difficult at times. So um, here's kind of where I'm going to start talking you through just five tips um, that I think will help to increase your feelings of motivation. Now, these might not work for you. One might work for you, but another might not. You might have your own tips on, on what makes you feel more motivated. Um, if you feel like sharing, please do. Um, I know it's going to help a lot of people, you know, and I know it does help people when, you know, you share your difficulties and the things that you do to overcome them. So, um, <laughs> Sarah's saying she's working and listening to me just like the olden days. It is just like the olden days. I hope you're not thinking, Victoria, please stop talking so I can get on with my work. I know you probably wouldn't be the only person uh, that would have thought that whilst working with me, but it's fine. It's all good. I'm here to talk, so it's fine. Okay, so tip number one, um, start small. Be realistic with yourself. If your goal is to clean the kitchen, but that feels too overwhelming, start by picking one small area to clean, one small corner. Um, notice how you feel when you've done it. Um, chances are that little corner of your kitchen is you're going to feel so good about that that you're going to want to do like a little bit more or you're going to want to pick another corner to do or you know I'm just going to tidy the sink bit here. Small steps. When we set ourselves these big old goals they can feel unachievable um, and we can quite often avoid the task altogether but when you break it down it feels much more manageable. Um, it's called chunking so um, I uh, watched a video the other day about David Blaine. Does anyone remember David Blaine, the magician that used to do all of those kind of wacky, you know, stunts in the middle of really public places? They were talking about how he used chunking to get through. Um, do you remember that thing that he did where he was like in the middle of a block of ice? He knew that if he was like, right, well, I've got to spend 30 hours in a block of ice, he would never mentally be able to get through that. So he chunked it into hour slots, right, I'm just going to get through the next hour, right, I'm just going to get through the next hour. And that's how he got through these 30 hours or 36 hours, whatever it was, of being encased in a block of ice. And I know that's an extreme example, but the point that I'm trying to get at is when you break things down they feel less daunting, they feel less manageable, and we're more likely to get stuff done rather than, you know, focusing on this big old task that just feels completely overwhelming. Um, tip number two, routine. Um, I can see that we've got Georgia watching. Hello, Georgia. Um, I do want a, a little button comes up. When I can see someone's watching, a little button comes up. Um, that says wave and I always want to wave at you guys but I'm scared that I'm going to accidentally press another button that's going to like switch off the live feed um, so I'll just wave in real life rather than via mm -hmm. the screen okay tip number two routine so I feel that this is part of the reason why some of us are feeling so unmotivated right now um, because we are out of our usual habits and routines um, we're all at home, or at least most of us are at home. In usual life, we would get used to doing the same things at the same times in the same way, and our brains would know, you know, exactly what's coming next, and that can be our motivator. So once I do A, I move on to B, and then I do C. And knowing what, you know, knowing we're getting stuff done motivates us to move on to the next thing because it's almost like second nature. Um, for those of us that are out of our normal daily routines, which face it is, is most of us, um, try and create a new one, try and create a new routine. It doesn't have to be complicated, you know, it, your meal times can be the cornerstones of, of a new routine or, you know, a time to get up and a time to go to bed. Um, there's been some really good templates online which gives you like a blank template and then different activity suggestions to slot in it's going to be individual to everyone because not all of us like to do the same thing or need to do the same thing um but you know try and fill your day with things that you want to do things that you need to do things that make you feel good um and try and kind of have a bit of a structure because otherwise we kind of find ourselves like lolloping around and not really knowing you know what comes next and what time of day it is and 
you know, I feel like I'm I'm in this permanent state of, you know, that period of time between Christmas and New Year where you don't really know what day it is. And, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to loll around and, you know, move between the sofa and the fridge, you know, four times an hour. Like, it just, you know, and, and that can help to make us feel, you know, a lack of motivation because we don't really know what we're supposed to be doing. So if you create a routine for yourself, having a plan and ticking things off can really help to motivate you to achieve more because you can visually see the progress you're making. Um, I'm a big fan of a list and this might sound a bit sad, I don't know if anyone else does this, but sometimes if I do something that I haven't written on my list, even after I've done it, I'll go to my list and write down the thing that I know I've already done just so I can tick it off. Like, I don't know, I'm going to own it, maybe that's weird, but just for me, my motivator is to see that list you know, with the, the things crossed out, the things ticked off and moving on to the next thing. And that's what makes me feel good. Um, so yeah, routine, give it a go. Um, when you're figuring out what your routine will look like, make sure you're getting enough rest and relaxation in there too as well, um, as, as well as enough sleep. Um, we are much more, more likely to feel motivated when we have enough energy and strength. So it's really important to look after ourselves, guys. Um, tip number three, know your why. So what I mean by that is if there's something that you want to do or achieve, try and focus on why you want to achieve it rather than how much energy it's going to take to do. Um, try and think about how your future self will feel once it's done. So if it's cleaning the kitchen, Imagine the sense of relief you'll feel once it's done and how nice it will be to walk into the room and not have like a pile of dishes on the side. How nice it will smell, so fresh and clean. Um, <laughs> I realise a lot of examples in all of my lives um, revolve around cleaning my kitchen. So <laughs> that is... Um, that goes to show what my lack of motivation normally revolves around. Um, and, and the areas that I struggle with. So, um, yeah, identify your why and remind yourself of it all the time. It might be as simple as repeating, I'll feel better once I've done this. Um, or, you know, it might be as creative as making a vision board with pictures and quotes, you know, that, you know, sort of, so you can create like a picture of what you want your life to look like and you know the difference that achieving your goals is going to make so, so you know it could be something to inspire you um our why will, will be different from person to person no doubt but it's important to be aware of yours and actually if we're struggling to feel motivated to do something or get something done it may be that we're doing it for the wrong reasons, maybe we're trying to be motivated to do something that's going to meet someone else's needs and not necessarily our own, or maybe we feel pressured to do something because someone else has told us we have to. So it's important to make sure that the things that you want to do are for yourself and are going to make you feel better for whatever reason. Okay, tip number four habits so the more habits you can insert into your daily life the less you have to rely on motivation to do the things that you need or want to do so there are a lot of different scientists and researchers it seems that have varying opinions on how long it takes to form a habit but generally if you do something this the same thing every day for two to three weeks, it starts to become habitual. Um, so when you start to implement small habits daily, at the same time, it soon becomes weirder not to do them than to do them. So um, you can tailor these um, with your goals, the things that you want to achieve, or you can tailor these to try and combat the things that you struggle to motivate yourself, motivate yourself to do the most. 
Um, so we're going back to the kitchen example again. Um, I know that it really gets me down when my kitchen's messy and when it gets really messy, I then feel really unmotivated to clean it. So then every time I'm going to the kitchen to eat or make something, I'm just adding to the mess and then it becomes a suspicious cycle of, you know, my kitchen's a mess. I don't like it when it's a mess. It makes me feel down when it's a mess. But because I feel down, I feel less unmotivated to do it because now it's this like big job. Um, so I have tried to implement a habit that I'll wash up after dinner every night. Now, for some of you, this might be a habit already, and you might think, well, that's just what you do. Of course you wash up your dishes, um, you know, after you've eaten every night. But it's, for years, it's something that I really struggled to do. I'd be like, oh, I'll do it in the morning, or, you know, I'll do that later on, and then it would never come, and then it would be a big thing. Um, so now I try and um, keep uh, on top of it. Um, you know, it's by doing the washing up at night after dinner, I'm keeping on top of it and I'm not just adding breakfast dishes to it the next morning, making it a bigger job. Um, and I added another habit on top in that once I've washed up, I'll then watch like one of my favorite shows as like a little reward. So now it feels, you know, I've been doing that for a good few weeks now and now it's like, I can't relax if I haven't done it. Um, so, um, yeah, habits. Try and insert some habits into your life. Now's a really good time while we're all at home. We can kind of tinker with our daily routine and our daily structure and get into some good habits um, that are going to help you to not get to that point where you feel too unmotivated to do something. I'm just looking at the comments. And um, Georgina, hello, my friend. Um... I also love lists. Um, shout out if you love a list. I love a list. Um, uh, Georgina is saying that you've made cakes. Lovely. You have to post a picture or something so that we can see them. Um, did I say vision balls? I don't know. Did I say vision balls? I didn't mean to say vision balls. If I did. Um, oh, vision ball. Vision boards. Boards. Sorry. It might have sounded like I said balls. Um, I didn't vision boards. So, you know, like, you know, maybe a bit of cardboard or just a, a bit of paper that you can stick pictures to and quotes or photos or, you know, like, say, if you were trying to lose weight, you might put a photo on there of a time when you felt really comfortable in your own skin, when you felt, you know, comfortable with how you look like, uh, what you look like. Or, you know, if you're doing up your house, you might put photos or pictures on, on there of magazines of, you know, things that you find inspiring. So yeah, vision boards, not vision balls. Um, so um, tip number five, and this is another one that I feel I say every time I do one of these things, but it's it's always true. Um, be kind to yourselves. Um, now more than ever, guys, uh, now is not the time to be punishing yourself for not being motivated. Uh, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to feel at the moment, but chances are when you start layering on shame and punishment and negative self-talk on top of your lack of motivation, that's going to take a lot longer to get out of. So if you've had a lazy day, so what? You know, if you've been up to the fridge, you know, 15 times in an hour, so what? Just me? 15 times? No, just me? Um, you know, if you've fallen off the wagon with your diet, you can start again. Each new day is a new opportunity to form a new routine or habit or do something that's going to make you feel good. Um, just as a side note as well, there are some really good motivational speeches on YouTube and Spotify um, or just generally on the internet. Um, that can help kind of G you up a little bit when you're feeling in a bit of a funk and can't really be bothered to do much. Um, if you need a bit of energising, you know, have a look at some motivational speeches. Denzel Washington, amazing motivational speaker. It just, honestly, like, when the man talks, it just does something to me. It makes me want to get up and move and be the best version of myself that I can. Um, Will Smith, another really... Uh, good motivational speaker 
but like on YouTube, there are compilations of all different people doing like motivational speeches and, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, maybe give it a go if you're feeling a bit meh. Um, same goes with music, you know, I know that, you know, if there's something I need to do and I'm putting it off, um, if I put sort of energizing music on or like my favorite songs, it's going to give me a little bit of a boost. It's going to give me a push to, um, you know, get that thing done. Um, because music is like that, right? It, it has the power to kind of evoke a range of different emotions within us. So maybe with this time, put yourself together like a motivational playlist of like really energizing songs that make you want to get up and move and do stuff. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Um, I've spoken a little bit longer than I normally do. I hope I haven't bored you guys. You're probably all sitting there asleep, but, um, yeah, as ever, it's been lovely to see you all. And, um, if you have any ideas of anything that you'd like me to speak about next week, let me know. Um, Sarah actually is saying that when you tick something off on a list, it gives you, um, an oxytocin boost, which is good for the mind. Yes. That is true. So, you know, it's that, that good, happy hormone in your brain that, you know, makes you feel good. And maybe that's, you know, what I was talking about when you clean a corner of your kitchen, you get a little oxytocin boost. And we all need as much oxytocin as we can right now, guys. So, um, Jan saying TED Talks are good too. TED Talks, very motivational, and on a wide range of things as well, not just motivation. TED Talks have got things on like self-esteem, confidence, um, a wide range of anything that you might be struggling with. Ah, oh, Sarah's saying um, for me to talk longer because it's making you happy. Um, maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll record my own motivational video uh, for you, Sarah, so you can play it over and over again. Um, so yeah. I'm going to let you guys go now. I've kept you for long enough. Um, but I will see you next Tuesday, 10 a.m., usual time, usual place. Um, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to talk about. Um, and I'll see what I can do. Okie doke. See you later.